then the monitor gets it and can uh, send the message back, change state uh, if it's uh, the, the LED should be um, switched. So, and now the last demo. <coughs> The, the basic idea was to um, only have very short uh, code and to omit a lot of security things, authentication and all the things you can think of. So this is, for example, the, the, uh, the code for the Raspberry Pi. And the, uh, this uh, word program starts with uh, something called Big Bang. And uh, it says, you have a device ID, you register at the server. Um, we draw, that's just a uh, window with the actual device set, on then we collect state and send this uh, back. And if we get a message, then there's another function. So it's only two pages. And the monitor is um, similar. Uh, we have a, a big bang again, and we want to receive messages. We register to the server and we have to, to draw our uh, actual state. And then we can uh, get a message and we can check if there's uh, if it's a message published. And then we check if the temperature is in a given uh, bandwidth. And I think we had something between 10 and 30 degrees Celsius. So then everything's okay. If it's out of that um, range, then the game should. So now then we can start with um, our broker. So this is the, the server and you see the server state. So uh, at the moment it's empty and here we can uh, see all the messages are coming up. So now we start with the uh, Raspberry Teams. One idea was to have a uh, the way of the Raspberry Pi, so our students could use the records, uh, EE, uh, Dr. Record on the PC and on, on the Raspberry Pi as well. And I start, so that was number three, number one, number three. Give them some time. Yeah. So this is on the on one of these uh, P's uh, the to draw. Uh, that's the timestamp, the temperature, and the state of the LED. It's uh, uh, false because it's not so strong. And now we see uh, in the, on this uh, all these three P's are sending their messages to the broker. And nothing special is happening as long as we start the uh, monitors. Uh, normally they have been on the student's PC and I start them on my local machine. Three of them. So you see they are monitoring. Hopefully. So. And now it's getting a bit uh, uh, more messages. I can press a screenshot and then you can see that, for example, if uh, P02 sends a message, no, that's not the best one, uh, here, publish data, and that's the device state, timestamp, temperature, 125, so maybe one of these symbols is uh, not working properly. And it's gone going then from the broker to the monitor, and the monitor responds with, oh, well, please change state of uh, P02 to um, true, so that uh, LED should uh, switch on. All right. So now how can we test that? Um, now I have an assistant. Ah, just one second, we have a small, uh, what I call, wall. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say you're going to thank the whole actors. That's real. <laughs> my, my so, my, 
For example, P03 is not uh, connected somehow, so maybe there will be a problem, but now we can. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, you are in the front, please. Uh, is it so? Uh, what's the state of this LED? Yeah, so, this is. So, and that's the, uh, such a kind of central wall so everyone could uh, um, uh, watch all the piece in the in the uh, classroom. Yeah. Uh, not well, but P03 is not working, but that's uh, everything that is live table. Yeah, uh, so then uh, some conclusions from the uh, two days uh, course. Um, we and the students were quite impressed that they uh, learned very fast to um, um, write these programs under the instruction. And they reported that they were um, impressed to have um, with such little knowledge uh, such a setup. Another thing we learned is local infrastructure is sometimes difficult, so we had uh, a lot of work to do to get these uh, P's in the university's um, infrastructure. So today we had uh, our own uh, route here. And um, another thing was that it's quite difficult to uh, explain when uh, those world programs are connected to a server and these messages sent back and forth. So that was quite difficult to explain. It took quite a long time. And next time we're going to give the students more time to uh, do some experiments with that because we hoped that one of them is going, at least one of them is going to hack uh, the P of another one, but that didn't happen. So uh, perhaps we should give them more time to to really um, understand what security means and why some things are not working uh, in real life if you do it like this. Yeah, so that's uh, our two days course in a very short uh, demonstration. So we have time for several questions. Yes. Did you find it easier to explain this to people who had no prior experience than to explain it to people who had done some programming before? Well, um, the, to be honest, the, uh, the um, course uh, did not consist only of uh, students of engineering. There were some of computer science as well. So we could uh, watch both groups and um, to my uh, impression, there was no difference. So even though starting with the C++ or something, or Java or whatever, they uh, started to learn very fast as well, and no problem with that. Is, is that the reason you chose a language that has been seen by neither of the two of them? Uh, yeah. Okay. And were there any protests from the students about learning a new language just for this? Uh, no, but in the, in the end, some of them reported, oh, well, I saw much programming, I just wanted to put something again, and so on. So some of them said, oh, so much programming. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't tell them in advance, so. <laughs> More questions? Yeah. Yeah, we have one um, higher education could very well benefit from, from more of this kind of initiatives. Very well done. Thank you very much.